Hello, everybody, and welcome to this panel on Let's Play and Independent Games. I'm going to introduce your moderator for this panel, Zulani, one of the organizers of Indie 3, and then hand it off to Zulani, and we'll bring in our other guests. So take it away, Zulani. Hello, everyone. My name is Zulani Stewart. Um, I'm going to be moderating particularly this panel, uh, as well as the chat, um, although the panelists are themselves also have a pretty good idea when they want to talk about. Um, this is a panel on Let's Play and Independent Video Games, and we have some developers as well as some people in the Let's Play community who want to talk a little bit about this relationship. Um, the Picare is a relationship. It's probably going on for about an hour or so, um, so, so stick around. Um, we're going to bring them just now. All right. Here we go. Hello, everyone. Hey. Hey, how are you doing? Good. Uh, so this is so there are five people on this panel. This is Arden, Tipizum, hey. Comfy Freak ninety nine, also known Hello. as Nicholas, if so, and Ironicus and Slow Beef. Hello. And and I'm Hello. going to just sit here watching, listening in the background while uh, you guys talk about what you want to talk about. Woo. I know Nicholas had some notes himself as well. So. Oh boy, I did. <laughs> uh, so hello, I'm Nicholas, uh, CompuFreak99 on Twitter, uh, I do, um, streams for the Scottish Drop Consortium, a group of something awful Let's Players. Uh, do the rest of you want to introduce yourselves? Uh, sure. Uh, I'm Arden. I make uh, visual novels and dating sims and, like, interactive fiction stuff. I'm at Spratella on Twitter, and right now I'm working on a game called Date or Die, which is at Date or Die on Twitter. I choose date, by the way, just definitely. <laughs> Good choice. <laughs> Alright, well, I'm Chip Cheesum. Um, I'm a guy who's been doing Let's Plays for the Something Awful Let's Play sub forum since about 2008. Uh, you can find me at Chip Cheesum on Twitter or chipandironicus.com. I think you're also the moderator of that Let's Play forum, Wow. We can't. I suppose so. <laughs> I don't do much. Uh, I start. Uh, this is Ironicus. Uh, I started doing LPs. Actually, coincidentally enough, the exact same day as Chip did. <laughs> wow. What a weird coincidence. <laughs> and my screen name is also in the name of that website. Yeah, we are commentary partners. But uh, I also have my own side projects, such as uh, Six Feet Under, which recently launched, and our flagship product, Let's Play the 13th Age. Hi, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, my name is Mike Sawyer. I go by Slow Beef on the internet. I uh, started doing Let's Play on Something Awful in 2006. I became the moderator uh, for a few years, and then I handed it off to Chip Cheesem and some other dude. I don't know. Oh. Um, uh, but yeah, I've been I've been doing Let's Play for quite a while now. All right. All right. So, that's that's everybody. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I think it's fair to say that by this point in time, Let's Plays and streaming are just a thing that happens in video game culture. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, what we really want to talk about here is the kind of relationship that Let's Players and developers have, and how we can improve upon it or uh, foster some of the, the elements of that. Yeah, well, it works um... for me. <laughs> I, I think there, I think there's sort of an interesting distinction there, where like there's kind of a mutual thing going on, where obviously the game is helping promote the let's player, but this is also happening in reverse. And um, it seems like in, in, like independent game developers are really more into that type of thing, you know, because obviously it helps them a lot. And this, you can see like the smaller developers are the ones who speak out in support of let's play, and they put it on their websites and things like that. Like you know, feel free to uh, record this game, do what you like with footage of it, monetize, don't monetize, etc. Whereas the AAA titles, even though it's free promotion for them, they don't seem to really know what to do with it, you know, and they're mm -hmm. just sort of silent. So like, I, I think there is like a better, I'll call it a friendship there between independent games and uh, and let's players and streamers and such. 
like you can think of LPs as uh, the independent side of marketing. You know, it's just sort of the DIY, uh, hands off, just jump in the, the wild west of game promotion. I guess <laughs> <laughs> yeah. if, if, if you want to romanticize it that way. But I mean, it, it's still yeah. very uh, user creator driven sort of thing, which is why it uh, uh, aligns more than. You know, you don't see a lot of the people exhibiting today buying magazine ads. Right, right. And that's and the thing is too, like when you see like bigger companies do video reviews and and video game based video content, they you typically get a sort of buffered opinion, if that makes sense. You know, it's sort of the problem with right. video reviews in general. You know, it's sort of like I don't want to piss off a, a game company or something like that because maybe they won't give me a review copy later down the line things like that you know or yeah i want to i want to stay friends with someone who might advertise with me whereas let's play it's just you know, like you say the wild west because it's just anybody who can just go out there and say whatever they like you, you know even if it has absolutely nothing to do with the game sometimes <laughs> do you well, think that uh that is what sort of drives that uh, level playing field. Like it's everybody is sort of powerless together. So <laughs> yeah, you have to have that mutual respect because uh, you, you don't have the relationship where one side can screw over the other a as much. Yeah, like it's really hard for, I mean, like I, I can't really think of anything where like an independent dev could like has that much power to, to you know, like totally fuck over, or, sorry, sorry, PG, uh, to screw over someone's uh, let's play or you know, whatever. I've got him flustered now because I swore. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, you, you. Go ahead. I was gonna say you, you, you actually see the opposite, really, where even um, devs kind of give shout outs to let's players. Um, I know it was a surgery simulator added a bonus level where like you could you know do surgery on an alien and all the organs were named after let's play popular let's players who who uh, LP'd the game back in the day. <laughs> Yeah, and like, there's another instance of that where it's like, um... Uh, Octodad 2? Is that the one you're thinking of? <laughs> oh no, actually, that's a third one. Octodad 2 has a freelance astronauts reference in it, since they did a, a stream slash LP of the first one that a lot of people saw. But I was actually thinking of uh, the horror game Dreadout that came out recently. There's oh, yeah. a weird teddy bear Easter egg character in there who I can't remember the name of, but it was named after... That it's what PewDiePie named it when he did a video of it, so they just kind of adopted that. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, there's yeah, there's quite there's a, there's a few things like that. It's it's pretty cool, like to see that sort of thing, you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's it's really like a neat thing that like I don't know, devs should, especially the smaller devs. It's like really good to you know take advantage of people who are like you know obviously like your thing enough to let's play it. I mean, even if they don't like it while we're playing it it's still like you know someone who's watching this might think that your game is interesting and want to play it for themselves anyway so like you're not really losing out on anything right yeah and it yeah it's, it's and it's just getting and like you say like we said it's like getting your name out there for both sides really you know what i mean because you know otherwise the lp you know the lp or gets a sort of platform on which to uh make a funny video or make an interesting video or what have you and there you have it yeah, I'm done. That's my final point. Take it easy, everyone. <laughs> no. Bye. I, I agree that there can be a, a real symbiotic relationship there, that you can, an LP -er can raise awareness for the game um, and raise awareness for themselves in, in turn. Uh, but to really, for a Let's Player to really support the game, they have to say interesting things about the game as well. They have to also, like, display that the game is fun to the viewers so yes you're right um although there's some exception to that uh because in the, the big one i, I want to talk about is um is a uh, minecraft which mm -hmm. uh th whose success has pretty much been even notch himself admits has been driven by let's play you know and the thing about minecraft let's play is there's really only so much you can do with it so right you, if you watch Minecraft Let's Play, I'd say 90% of the commentary has absolutely nothing to do with Minecraft. You know, I don't know, maybe yeah. that's an, except, an exception that I'm bringing up now, or if that's just a thing where, you know, if a game becomes less playable, like I Want to Be the Guy was driven pretty far by uh, by Let's Plays of it, you know. 
I, I don't think it counts, but Kaizo Mario World, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and the thing is, as you see more and more of that content, you get less and less relevant commentary, I guess, you know? <laughs> um, that said, I, you know, Let's Play is sort of an interesting beast because it's not quite a review, you know? You don't necessarily go to a Let's Player because you want an informed analysis of the wood on a review, you know? You mm -hmm. just kind of want to see someone's first impression of it. Um, so... I don't know. I don't know exactly how important it is for the Let's Player to be saying positive things about the game in order to influence sales or awareness of it. Right. Yeah, like I, I mean... know that. If, sorry, if I know that if I was gonna like watch something, I don't necessarily want to like always hear a Let's Player being like just gushing over it and being like, "Wow, this is great." It's like no, like I'm watching for your personality. Like I don't, you know. I think like if people are just like personable and you know friendly and like have fun things to say like even just like that sort of atmosphere like being overlaid over the game can have like a really powerful effect on people like if they're thinking like oh look it's this person's having fun while playing this even if they're not like talking about the game itself like that you know will obviously make someone think like associate fun with this game i don't know yeah, yeah um i i think this topic is one thing that uh points out how uh LP and it isn't the the be all end all of promoting your game just because uh, a let's player's first responsibility is is to themselves is to make something entertaining and not to to be your sales department. So there there can be a friction there because your goals aren't exactly aligned. Right, and uh, uh, ahead of this panel, I actually gathered some comments from uh, people out in the. Let's Play and developer community. Uh, uh, Maxwell Tovel on uh, Twitter says that um, an LP can affect my purchase choice when it feels like watching the game gives me a better experience than playing it. Um, I'm sorry, you mean like it would have a negative correlation of sales because yeah. it becomes because the LP becomes like a substitute product. Yeah, yeah. If it is more fun to just watch the Let's Play, then the action in the game does not seem appealing. So, this is kind of an interesting uh, situation, and I don't know that I've ever seen any correlation to what kind of games, you know, what kind of Let's Plays lead themselves to that sort of negative correlation, you know? That mm -hmm. sort of inverse relationship. Um, because sometimes even really bad games that Let's Players make fun of or hate, like, say, uh, what is that, Ride to Hell Retribution? Oh, God. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah right. Yeah. Or that Rambo game, you know, things like that. It spreads awareness, and people tend to buy those things ironically, you know, because they, like, they want to, they, they see how bad it is for themselves with the Let's Player, granted, but some people really do like to just, like, actually know for themselves, you know, um... How bad it is. Right, yeah, exactly. It's like, um, I remember when, uh, when Destructoid was talking about Deadly Premonition when that first came out, and, mm -hmm. like, you know, they were mentioning, like, just talking about Deadly Premonition, and, like, that game's sales, like, went, you know, nuts because of it, because people were like, what is this game? Like... Yeah. If you, if you took a game like Phoenix Wright, though, you would think that the Let's Play would totally be a substitute product. Because, like, once you've seen the story, there's not much else to see unless you want to just rewatch the story, in which case you could just rewatch the Let's Play. That said, I mean, Phoenix Wright, like, videos and things like that, they do seem to actually drive interest toward the game and thereby sales, you know? It, it's, yeah. it's just kind of hard... It's kind of hard to draw the line. I guess if the game... I guess the game has to look completely uninteresting or mm -hmm. maybe... Maybe like a David Cage game. I don't know. That's a weird exception. <laughs> I know that, like, I personally like I I would rather watch let's plays of horror games than play horror games, just because like I am too scared to play horror games on my own. So like, it's the only way that I can actually like experience that uh, is by like watching other people play it and like make fun of it and like having it be less scary for me because I'm a baby. Um, but like on the other hand, um. Like I, I, there was a there was let's play on something awful the Danganronpa let's play um that you know mm -hmm. it's again that's oh, like I know a that story one. based visual novel uh, <laughs> and you would you would think that like uh, reading that would like totally ruin it for me it's like why do you have a reason to come out and like go out and buy the game but like I still bought it when it came out here and like played through it and it was still you know great like I don't think like that let's play was like a substitute for it at all right. even though it seems like it totally would be so it's like it's hard to tell really like, yeah. And I um, I'm sorry, I don't mean to be if anybody else has anything you want to 
That was but fun. um I uh and I think that that was the thing we were worried about, which is why we had the three to six month rule on SA originally was, you know, we didn't want to sort of compete with the game per se. You mm-hmm. know, we wanted to be kind of developer friendly and now now of course we find out developers love it, so or most of them do, I should say. Um <laughs> Yeah, so I guess I guess the only way a Let's Play can really hurt sales, I feel like, is if you have a poor product, maybe, for a game, you know? Either something that's just completely broken to the point where it looks bad to play, or, you know what I mean? Like, something, not even that, like, so bad it's good type of thing, just bad, yeah. sort of, you know? In which case, though, too, I guess the ironic thing is you probably don't see very many Let's Plays of it, so... Maybe that evens out in some way. Yeah. Um, the, I, mean, I mean, as far as I know, I'm, I'm sorry, I just want to make one. Oh, I'll be doing sure. this. Um, <laughs> as far as I know, too, I don't have or I don't know of any hard data. And maybe one somebody here does of how Let's Play actually impacts sales. You know, I don't even know if that exists, if anyone's done any sort of research I don't, on that or what. Yeah, I don't think there's any actual research on that. There's just, every once in a while you see like anecdotal stuff where it's like this lets you know like with yeah. specific let's play threads or something you know mm-hmm. a, a whole bunch of people and it's like you know maybe a couple dozen but right. that's all those are the only people who are telling you so yeah it's yeah. like all anecdotal stuff right or even specifically like danganronpa where you could you could pretty much almost directly see that the let's play <laughs> oh, yeah. actually yeah influenced the the fandom which influenced them to bring to report the game over in the first place um yeah, that was i think Tom, <laughs> yeah Tom, i think thomas was alone to um is an indie game where the I, the developer is completely behind let's play and i think i think he said it like it drove so much in in the way of sales just word of mouth because of because of that you know um, yeah. Again, Minecraft, you know. Yeah. I'm just gonna be. Minecraft was the only point I had to bring up <laughs> this panel, so this is the only thing I'm gonna be saying over and over and over again. <laughs> well, uh, I'm sorry. I, I might one up you there and say another game that was influenced by Let's Plays was Amnesia: The Dark Descent. Yeah. Now you listen to me, you son of a bitch. If you're gonna <laughs> one up me in public, you better. I'm know very sorry. Gonna... Sorry. No, I'm joking. I'm Please joking. don't bang um, me. <laughs> I got chip banned him. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, um, I'm sorry, so you're saying, like, you think Let's Play influenced Amnesia? Yeah, and I find that interesting because Amnesia isn't really a game that's... It's not really a game that is very good for Let's Plays. It, it was mostly uh, the... The scare cam that was I'm reading there. the chat, and uh, just a little while ago, they were saying, uh, even before he brought it up, that Amne- uh, Let's Play Killed Amnesia is a quote from someone. I missed your name. Oh, yeah. It was like 10, 15 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, a point I wanted to bring up about that uh, specifically is I recall a, a Let's Play Amnesia video that uh, a friend of mine in college said, oh, man, you have to listen to this. Um which was just the the player of the game like freaking out and and crying mm. and then in the <laughs> background a friend of his says oh man i dropped my snickers and right. that was the draw of the video not the actual experience of the player or the game see you know the it's an interesting thing cuz i don't think amnesia actually lent itself well to scare cam let's play believe it or not i think it's one of those things where you know the whole like Filming people's reaction to two girls, one cup, or oh my God. red wedding on oh, the no, game. Don't bring that up here. <laughs> or red, or the red wedding on Game of Thrones to be more topical and less disgusting. Yeah. Yes. You know what I mean though. Like the the whole appeal of Let's Amnesia. It wasn't really the gameplay at all. It was look how scary this game is, which of course helped like a sort of marketing thing. And you can see like things like Paranormal Activity do it now in commercials. Oh and yeah, that's right. All that stuff. I'm gonna look to see when chat catches up to what I said. By the way. Anyway. Um, <laughs> no. Uh, uh, yeah, so, I mean, because that's the other thing about Amnesia, it's tricky, and any sort of stealth game, and it, it, it gets into a tricky thing with Let's Play, because things like that, you have downtime, and that's kind of when you have to, when you don't have the game to draw upon to talk about. I mean, how many times can you, like, hear a guy breathe heavy while he's trying not to look at a monster around the yeah, corner start, until like, he can save? Yeah, start, yeah. like, crying everywhere. Like, that's the thing, is Amnesia, it, it, it always, like, struck me as weird as how many people like i mean even uh even day nine who's a starcraft uh like caster like let's play that game 
and it was like a big deal, you know, because he was like freaking out the entire time, like, you know, cuddling a teddy bear as he's playing it. But like, it was just it's so bizarre because Amnesia has so much like downtime and it's so slow. Like it's a really mm -hmm. slow paced game. Like there's really not that many jump and scares or anything. Like it's a lot of like wandering through pretty castle, like holding a lantern. Like it's, and it's almost kind of pleasant sometimes. <laughs> and that's the thing, right? Cause a horror game, excuse me, a horror game too. It has to be kind of slow paced in order to build up tension and everything like that, you know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It yeah, just, it's just, it's just, I was surprised that it just, like, worked so, I mean, people loved it, like, like loved, like, Let's Plays of it and stuff, so it was just really surprising, because I, you know, I figured that people would have gone for a horror game that had much, like, way more, like, jump scares or whatever. Now, uh, I mean, Frictional wasn't, wasn't an indie, right? That, they were, I mean, they had a few games of horror amnesia, if I remember. Yeah. They were, they were kind of big or, or not. They're, well, I think they were actually pretty small when Amnesia um, first came out, and then, you yes. know, that game exploded, mm -hmm. and, like... Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but, yeah. I mean, it's the tricky thing about Let's Play 2 is you get the sort of Let's Play the game du jour, where, you know, I'm sure Alien Isolation is probably going to be the next one, you know? <laughs> um, maybe Bloodborne later on after that, oh, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. 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 Because I, I think there is this, like, sort of overwhelming trend in Let's Play of, like bombastic overreaction is what sort of sells the video and maybe yeah. thereby the game so and, and you can see now uh, by the way now too you can see developers who are um i, I think uh total biscuit referred to goat simulator as pewdie bait you know <laughs> like a game specifically made yeah there have been there have been a couple instances of games people saying that some games that have come out have been specifically tailored for like PewDiePie or other big YouTube celebrities yeah, exactly. just to yeah well um wasn't mm -hmm. that wasn't uh I mean, know that Daylight uh came out and was not good but I felt like that had such an interesting premise like you know with the whole like it's a game that's essentially seems like it's made for like streaming like for horror games like you know with mm -hmm. the whole twitch functionality where you could like type in commands and have people scare you or whatever but then you know the game itself ended up not being great which was a shame but I feel like that's like such a I feel like that can be like a really cool thing, like to, you know, like, like to design games with like let's players in mind, like. Right, and uh, one of the topics that I wanted to sort of bring up and see if we can explore is uh, we we know that games like Amnesia have elements that are not really centered towards let's play and rely on that overreaction, but what are some mechanics or features of games that stand good on their own and are also attractive for let's play hmm. uh huh, okay well um, one problem you face is uh treating let's play as, as one unified thing but if you want to uh sort of maximize your effort one thing you can do is look for a let's player who would click with your game like, uh, not long ago, I was talking about this somewhere else, even, a uh, super great friend uh, got a free copy of a game to show it off uh, uh, and threw up the uh, order information. And it's, it's a methodical, really uh, sort of bizarre and unique puzzle game. And that's totally his thing. Whereas yeah. it, it wouldn't work for a lot of other people. Uh, he showed it off to its best... Uh, sort of strength because it fit with his style and it looked really cool whereas I, if he gave it to me I, I couldn't do nothing with that <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I um I know that like as someone who makes like you know I make visual novels and stuff and I used to kind of think that like those were impossible like to let's play at least with like with like video and audio because like you're just reading like you're mm -hmm. just reading my writing half the time and like that doesn't seem like fun to me but then um I know that uh Solon actually like you know who's like helping run in D3 and stuff um he does a he started doing a lot of Otome game like let's plays like he did a sweet like I met we actually met because I suggested that he play Sweet Fuse um which is like a PS Vita like Otome game and then he's like moved on to like doing like Hakuoki like in all this stuff and like you know is really good at it and so that's cool like to, it's like a cool thing for me to keep in mind like when my next game comes out like you know that there are people who do let's play visual novels and stuff and like you know there's probably someone out there who would be like love to let's play your game and would like you know make it look really good yeah and i think as long as people stay creative it's fine to you know do whatever game sorry go ahead 
Oh, right. Uh, I was going to say that uh, I have another comment from uh, streamer, let's player Grasslam, uh, at Grasslam on Twitter, uh, who says that when she looks for a game to stream, and she's done Otome games such as Had a Full Boyfriend, uh, mm. <laughs> she wants to see something about the game that is different, that she can show off to uh, other people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, at that point, it's just like, I mean, you know, make a good game. <laughs> That's kind of yeah, the right? advice. No, it, <laughs> right. No, it, it's smart. Uh, Grasslam's uh, smart with that, though, because you do you do want something that's going to have a hook, right? And, you know, if it's, uh, if it's like I mean, some ripoff game. or if, a very if, good hook. <laughs> right. Halo, <laughs> Halo 12, you know, not only are, you're going to drown in a sea of let's players who are also doing that and games like it. You know what I mean? You want something that's like... I don't know, you know, has some kind of mechanic nobody's seen before, is a little faster paced, or you have some sort of added twist to it, et cetera, is my personal belief, but, you know, then again. Well, the thing is that C, I mean, everybody chose to jump in there. That's why it's there. Uh, I think one thing that indie devs have to compete with is, uh, in getting uh, LP attention is that all the LPers, uh, well, a lot of them, want to piggyback on the AAA mm -hmm. games. So, like, every dollar yeah. spent advertising, uh, I don't know, Watch Dogs, is also sort of advertising me and my day mm -hmm. one LP. Now, that's the interesting thing, too, because now you have the big, the AAA Let's Players getting things like review copies and, get, and being able to do the day one Let's Plays before the other day one Let's Players. You yeah. Know? Oh, like, and, well, yeah. That reminds me. Um, I think we we were talking about this before we went on, but uh, like sometimes like devs don't even like want that. Like there was a weird situation with um with the second Amnesia game, right? Uh, where yeah. where the, the oh, Chinese yeah, room right. because yeah. PewDiePie, yeah, because yeah, uh, PewDiePie was like you know gonna do the jump care jump jump cam like uh, scare cam whatever stuff. Uh, but the Chinese room was like, please don't. <laughs> so what what happened was he uh he put out a compilation video of sorts, which is gonna be a preview to his. Amnesia 2 Let's Play. All right. Um, there is some, nobody knows the details exactly, but there was some miscommunication between Frictional and Chinese Room, Frictional being the producers, you know, where mm. Frictional apparently was like, all systems go, absolutely do this. But when he did it, Chinese Room said, whoa, he just spoiled like a big part of the game and I wish he hadn't done this. And to his credit, you know, he was like, okay, I'll take it down. Or no, he made it, he made it unlisted. So if you already yeah. had the list, you could watch it again. He, um, he eventually... Uh, took it down uh, of a sort. Yeah, yeah. Um, but so, yeah, uh, yeah. And there have been, and there's been cases. I know there was a case on something awful where, and I, I've never heard of this. This is so ridiculous. Somebody did a bad let's play of uh, Yoshi's Island ROM hack, and apparently the ROM hacker. I've never heard of this elsewhere. Felt the let's play was so bad, asked him to stop. And I was moderating at the time, asked me if I could stop the Let's Player from posting it on oh, Twitter. Wow. Oh, yeah. yeah. forgot about that. Yeah, I haven't. That was ridiculous. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> it's, it's rare that that happens. And, you know, the, the one crummy thing is sometimes you see, I haven't seen this with Let's Play yet, but you do see, um, unfortunately, smaller developers shutting down dissenting opinion, too, by, like, abusing the YouTube copyright system, you know? Right. Yeah. There was an incident with that. That is uh, and... such garbage. <laughs> yes, it really, is. it really is. There was an incident with that with uh, Kamok, uh, aka mm -hmm. Tortoise on Tour, aka yep. She Sells She Sells, uh, mm -hmm. where their you could just call him Bob. He doesn't mind. Bob. <laughs> 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 he was getting a lot of abuse from the developer, actually. Right. Yeah, that was ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not only yeah. uh, you know just just abusing the strike system, but like actual the comment actual... abuse yeah. and sock puppet accounts to make it look like a crowd when it's really just the one guy. Comments yeah. bad enough. Comments bad enough that we can't say them on the stream. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Was, yeah. Those were really vile. <laughs> yes, they were. Um, and yeah, and even like then, really, kind of be really horrible when the Counter Strike went through the way YouTube is. If you file the Counter Strike, both parties get each other's personal information. So YouTube's kind of like, now nah, this is up to you. Settle this in court. We don't want a part of it. You know what I mean? That's a so, little bit. Yeah, a little but, bit worrying. 
Well, I mean, you know, you have to, you have to get it. Yeah, I mean, box. you got to resolve <laughs> but, it one way or another. No. <laughs> um, but well, anyway, the, the, but the point I'm going to make is then the guy went out and, like, posted Bob's, like, personal, like, info and stuff. I, I forget exactly what, but it was it was really messy. It is something you, you do kind of worry about. But that said, you know, I, I think for the most part, indie, indie game devs want their name out there as much as possible, you know, mm. and... and what is it? There's no, there's no such thing as bad publicity, which I, I actually do believe is pretty much true. You know, I've, mm. I've actually had, um, I've actually had one experience I, with like my games being let's played, uh, which is unfortunately like not great. But like, okay. I don't know. I didn't ask the person like take it down or anything. But basically, I released a game called Kindness Coins last year. Uh, it was like a really short, like five minute visual novel. Why mm -hmm. anyone would want to let's play it is like completely beyond me because it's literally just like five minutes no branching of like reading stuff on a screen like whatever mm -hmm. uh so um this dude like for some reason let's played it and I've, I've never heard of him before i don't remember what his name was but he was really obnoxious and was just like uh, uh, just did not get it i guess i don't know it was it was uh the whole like message of my game was all about like how dating sims can be super creepy and how uh like they kind of play on like the whole nice guy like thing a lot we're like oh i say the right like dialogue options to you and now you have to love me like mm -hmm. sort of thing it was like funny it was just kind of like a like right, playful right. sort of thing and yeah. like because uh, i i originally someone was like oh look you're a game about let's play and i was like this is great and then i watched it and i was like oh my god i'm really horrified <laughs> like, <right now. laughs> this is so awful like he was doing like bad voices for the characters and stuff it was like really painful oh, to watch. no yeah oh um and so uh, I like I didn't ask him like to stop or anything. It's like who cares? I guess in the end of it, and then I actually did get some people even just from that like who enjoyed it, even you know over him being a jerk about it, who were like, oh, like good job with your game. I enjoyed it. It's like thanks. So <laughs> yeah, I mean that's you know really the worst that can happen, I guess. <laughs> right, right. Well, I mean that's a uh, that, I mean then yeah. The nice thing about Let's Play is no matter what you, how you do it or why you do it, like, you you do always see the things in the comments, like, oh, I bought this game because I saw you play it or whatever, you know? So, hopefully, yeah, the, you have the side effect of the cr the crummy Let's Player screwing up your game's, you know, intention, environment, ambiance, or just or just making a bad video out of it and yeah. using your game as the vehicle. Hopefully, at the very least, you kind of it spreads the word to someone else who maybe has a better experience with it. <laughs> yeah, or, or the one you were encountering. Yeah, I think it's possible for developers uh, to reach out to Let's Players to um, maybe work together to help improve each other's content in some ways. Yeah, yeah. I was going to bring up earlier what uh, indie devs can do to sort of counteract that pull of, well, the viewers want to watch the big games, and that's like number one on the list, I think, in my opinion. Yeah, I would love to hear you talk about that. Okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> so do that. <laughs> well, I mean, the, the example I was going to give is uh, a while ago uh, I did a basically a D and D let's play, one of thousands basically, and we had a lot of fun and people enjoyed it. And then we got tired of the game and we switched to Thirteenth Age, which is from a small press RPG uh, publisher, and it was still in playtesting at the time. And while Wizards didn't even know we exist, how could they? Uh, Pelgrane Press and Fire Opal, the developer and publisher of that game, have just been incredibly supportive. I mean, uh, they're promoting us uh, on their Twitter all the time. Uh, I'm going to be joining a stream of their uh, free RPG Day adventure on Free RPG Day, so watch out for that uh, June 21st. And I, you see the same sort of thing with uh, video game devs. Like, that's a resource you have is, is that sort of partnership and uh, symbiosis that a large corporation just can't manage because there, there's too much. It's right, too big to do it. Right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, like uh, if you try to reach out to a big company, you have a PR department to go through and then they have to worry about how you're handling their intellectual property. There's a thousand levels of bureaucracy, so you never get. But if it's just like three or four people in a room, you know, in Los Angeles or something like that. Of course you get to, like, talk to them and things like that, you know? Right. Uh, I'd like to... Right. That was my long-winded way of saying I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I'd also like to bring up uh, a comment I gathered from uh, Panzerskank, uh, at Panzerskank on Twitter. Um, uh, 
she says that when she goes to find games to LP, she looks for something that she has some kind of connection to, um, or that means something to her, uh, so that she can spread that to other people. And I think that by creating a good relationship uh, with developers and the Let's Players, you can help foster that connection. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, why not? Like, it, it helps to, like, be nice to people and, like, reach out and stuff. I mean, if you, if you like, want someone to, like, notice your game, like, the worst, like, I mean, as long as you're, like, courteous about it, you know, it can't hurt to just be like, hey, here's a link to my thing. Maybe take a look if you're interested. Like, the worst thing that can happen is, like, they don't reply to you or whatever. Or, like, they say no, but it's not the end of the world. Yeah, I, this is something that, uh, as LP sort of comes out of the closet, is happening even more, even with larger companies. Like, uh, it reminds me of the time Chip's um, Revengeance tutorial video got put on the Konami oh, yeah. Facebook page. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, now, now that it's sort of out of the bottle and it doesn't seem to be going anywhere, at least for a while, even the major companies are, are seeing how they can use it and testing the waters. Uh, yeah, it's like, uh, there are a couple people at Konami specifically that I think know about us now, like some of the PR people. Like there's Toroshiro who posts on NeoGAF a whole bunch, who's mentioned he watches our stuff on and off, and that's how we ended up on the Facebook thing, was because of him. Yeah. Man, as an aside, that, that <laughs> tutorial video was so helpful. <laughs> Silence. <laughs> Sorry. You know, no, it's all right. it's whenever there's no video game to talk to, to play off of, it's hard to talk. Oh, dang. My oh, whole my. life is video games. Oh, my. <laughs> my whole life is talking. This after. music here is nice, but can we replace it with, like, I don't know, Super Mario World hacks, something? <laughs> I, don't, I can't live unless I have Raiden right next to me. I'm sorry. Indie, indie, indie. Uh, I, I want to note, too, particularly, that our panels are usually an hour, but if you feel like you can conclude at any other time, that's totally okay. So no, you, hey, you hey, hey. Yeah, I'm just, excuse, I'm just, I'm just me. Yeah. I have one hour to promote myself and speak loudly, and I am taking it. To promote your brand? To, to promote my your brand. brand. Okay. Yeah. Your Buy personal Slope, brand. Slopey's personal. brand seltzer at AGP. Hashtag, hashtag content. Oh, Indy. At, at bodegas <laughs> around the country. Um... <laughs> Um, I'm sorry, was, was there another note we had to move on to? Yeah, yeah that's fine. What's in the notes? What's in the notes? Oh, let's see. Um, I think we covered everything that uh, I wanted to touch on. Um, the different types of ways that uh, Let's Players can support devs and devs can support Let's Players. Uh-huh. Uh, we could probably take some questions from the chat. All right, All right. Uh, chat, give us some questions. Keep in mind, we're working on a bit of a delay, so don't get too impatient. Thank right. you. Um, Zolani13 asks questions. Uh, yes, I have a few. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm such a card. Uh, oh, yeah. So, hey, yeah, speedrunning. People want us to talk about speedrunning. All right. <laughs> Yeah, let's, well, let's talk about esports. So that's a, well, that's a, that's a, that's kind of an interesting thing is that like you have this sort of weird crossover right between like skill skill runs and let's play in general, you know, and let and you know, I typically actually a lot of let's plays are completely unskilled runs, unfortunately for some games. Um, but yeah, like you, you, we actually, it's funny you had this community before. Like long plays have certainly been around for a while, and. Speed runs certainly as well, you know, and this notion of they're kind of doing the same thing, just I guess minus, uh, not to be a jerk, but minus personality maybe. Is that the sort <laughs> of thing, you know? <laughs> mm. But um, but you know, it, it doesn't seem like you have that same level of interaction. Like I don't know of any speed runs that necessarily sold a game. I could be wrong there. It, it could exist. I just don't know. Well, I don't have I mean, that uh, research. Uh, an LP shows off the game in its entirety, or at least a as played normally but uh -huh. I, I guess if you want to show off your game and how technical it can be giving it to a speedrunner to show off could really yeah. help with that you know for, for that audience because yeah. i think there there are i've seen there's like a fair amount of any games i've seen where they've had like specific modes or support put in for doing speed runs mm -hmm. 
Um, and like a side, I guess this kind of relates to an earlier thing, but that reminds me that like um, another good way for uh, an indie game to like to help out less players for for like actually less playing them is like doing stuff like that where there's adding more support. This might just be a thing that's me and a complaint for nobody else, but I'm going to say it anyways. <laughs> um, mainly with like the way I edit stuff or with the way I show off stuff, it really helps out when um, a game can become heavily segmented or... Yes. Yeah. So, like, e even little things like skippable cutscenes or easy ways to replay biz, because like with AAA games, it has become horrible because so many of them do not have save slots and so many of them auto save, and there's no way to stop mm -hmm. that. So Ooh. once you have a bad take, you got to figure oh, out a yeah. way to get back there. And with me, I'm really uh, niggling with the the details. So I want to make sure that if I have to go back and do that take, I have like the same moves and abilities and stuff that I had before. So it's not like spoiling something that comes later or whatever. Right. Yeah. And, or if, if something technically goes bad with auto saving, yeah. like you just can't get you can't get back there. You know. Yeah. I know that um, a thing that I'm really glad that a lot of visual novelists have started doing lately. Um, sorry, I, I just talk about visual novels all the time because I, I can't talk about anything else. Uh, <laughs> that's, a, that's okay. They're not real good. It's games. my thing. Um, Never. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Oh, right. <laughs> um, I, I, I'm really glad that a lot of them have finally started doing uh, like full on skip to the next choice options, which I can only imagine how healthy for visual novel let's players because having to like go through and manually like i mean some have a skip button where you can like just hit tab and it'll like fast forward through things but even still that, that also kind really of... helps the speed runners you can finish a visual <laughs> yeah. novel in like two minutes <laughs> in, like, 10 <laughs> right? minutes uh, <laughs> but um it's like it can like I, I don't know it's annoying when you have to like sit there for five minutes and watch like walls of text scroll by really fast like it's you know you're still waiting uh so i'm really glad that like a uh, in recently they've started adding in like full-on skip options where you just press a button and then it immediately takes you to the next uh, choice section in a story so i feel like that would be super helpful for like people who let's play like dating sims or or visual novels right. or, or whatnot i mean even just for general people playing it like when i'm replaying a game i don't want to have like you know yes your love confession was very sweet the first time i saw it i don't want to <laughs> see it 10 more times like please let me skip past it <laughs> Okay, uh, before we go back to the chat questions, I came up with one of my own. Uh, for Arden, as a dev, what would you like to see in a Let's Play of your game's game or games, hypothetically? Is it just exposure? Is there something else you'd appreciate? Um, I, I know that just just for me, uh, it, it just, you know, I just want to see, like, pleasant people, like, having fun with my game, you know? Like, that's that's really what matters. Like, I you know, it's, it's obviously, like, really nice if, I, I mean... I think a lot of uh, Let's Players can sometimes, like, forget to, like, mention where you can, like, buy indie games or, like, <laughs> where you can follow the developers on, like, Twitter or something, which is, you know, really helpful. Because, I mean, people are used to playing AAA games. Like, you know where you can buy Watch Dogs. Like, it doesn't, you know, you're not going to be like, but but where can I talk to the Watch Dogs writers on Twitter? Like, you know, that doesn't, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Um, so, you know, it's really helpful if you can... It'd just be like it, even in the comments of your video like right up top just be like i'm playing this game and here's a link to it um but i mean honestly it's just about like people having fun and like having nice personalities that like you know i don't know i kind of just want like let's players to like joke around and like do what they want to do and you know if my game can be in the background of that like it works for me <laughs> um oops, sorry guys Oh, no, I'm done. You can... Okay. Uh, Kalon Zombie uh, asks, when you LP an indie game, what do you look for in a game and why? Something hmm. that makes a great custom thumbnail. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, something... Uh, the real answer is, is actually along those lines. Uh, I, I like I like a hook. I like, I like something that's very unique or interesting about it, you know? Um... I'm, I'm trying to think because I, I actually haven't done a good let's play in a long time. No, um, but uh, I, I, I liked I did this stream of this game called Room Break, which I keep meaning to go back and let's play because um, it had an amazing script that um, was simultaneously really awful in execution multiple ways, you know, so it was like kind of really funny to watch and stuff. But um, so I, I always wanted to revisit it as like a screenshot let's play and I haven't got back to it. But just like I, I like these things that like are different enough or the game isn't maybe the angle that you take on it is that it's like 
nothing you haven't you've seen before or something that try you try to like extend yourself with you know what i mean then i just ran out of ideas into dark souls but still um <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I like a hook though i like uh, uh and indie games are great for that because they usually have something really 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 different about them yeah you know? i mean what I look for in a game is basically whatever Chip records, but otherwise, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, uh, a game that I like to talk about is the sort of game I like to play, which is one that has, you know, thought and craft put into it. Like, you can tell that uh, they, they thought of the little things. And right. Also, I mean, there's something to talk about. There's an idea. There, uh, it's thematically interesting. Uh, yeah. Which I don't have to worry about the part my thumbs do as the sidekick, so I don't. It doesn't even have to be that fun to play for my. Right. Mind, but uh, that's what I look for. Yeah, like when I, I've only done like one indie game, I suppose, but that was Bastion, which is like one of the more, it's one of the bigger ones out there. Yeah. But um, I for indie games, it's like it's the exact same thing I look for in normal games, in that even if it's not the greatest normal game. Games. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. The the big AAA ones. Um, Bunch of abnormal weirdos. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. That's no, funny. Oh, I just thought it was really funny. <laughs> no, um, with any kind of game, it's it's basically the same thing. Where I'm even if it's not the greatest thing to play, I like games that looks like when you are playing it, you can tell the people who made it really enjoyed working on it and actually cared about what they were making, and it wasn't just a product or you know work so yeah bastion's they, a good one for that yeah um right uh and bastion's really great for a lot of things yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> one of the things that indie games can actually have and like uh help sell themselves to let's players is that they can be about more personal experiences than you see in the AAA games yeah, I, I know that like some indie stuff. Like, I mean, I don't, I don't really like. I've never done like a let's play, but I do like stream sometimes. I know that like <laughs> some indie games almost get like too personal for me, like to be comfortable like streaming to people, which is like you know it's fine. Like they're really good like games and experiences, and like it's great that they exist. But like I know that there's there comes a certain point where I'm like I just need to like have a glass of wine and play this and like you know go cry under my desk or something. <laughs> like mm. I don't want to stream <laughs> that to people. <laughs> <laughs> um i'm lucky because i've i've just been hardened from years of a of a cold life in new jersey and video games <laughs> don't affect me anymore no um <laughs> i know what you mean though about the about the personal level too and and a lot of indie games are are um more willing to touch to touch like trickier or more interesting subject matter you know um mm. i don't even have like any sort of bent to that i mean just in general like Sometimes you just see in here, like even something like the Stanley Parable, you know, and there's like a yeah. lot you read into, and it, it's stuff that you almost feel like, you know, if if you're if you're a bigger corporation, you want to ensure sales, you know, to to stay competitive and things like that. It's like you don't want to take the riskier route because you kind of can't afford to because of who your who your competition is, you know, that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, and these can definitely be more risky with their design decisions. That's yeah, that's exactly it. And those risks are some of the things that are most fun to just sort of sink your teeth into with commentary and whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing the chat is clamoring for is uh, thoughts on Patreon. I'm not sure how yeah. Patreon relates directly to the relationship between LPs and Indies, but I think we could talk about it a little bit. Sure. Yeah, why not? Uh, sure. Sure. I, I mean, uh, there's been a trend recently for certain Let's Players to start Patreons. Let's start with a quick little intro. Patreon is a crowdfunding platform for ongoing projects. Uh, donors pledge a certain amount either per month or per completed project, depending on what the creator chooses. And so it's just a recurring payment to support things that go on rather than a single big project Kickstarter style. Right. Yeah, and I know that a lot of um, independent developers have also been using it uh, if they like make uh, like a game a month or something like that. If they're like a more prolific like indie devs, they you know they use Patreon and stuff so that people can just like keep supporting them over time and not necessarily like for every you know thing that they make. So yeah. 
I'm uh, I'm currently pursuing my MBA, which means whenever you ask me about money, it's gonna. I always come up with the greediest answer because <laughs> you get an A for that. Um, <laughs> no, but in in all seriousness, though, I mean, if you're the kind of person who's bent and you want to, who's bent is to do let's play as a career and you want to do that sort of thing, it's a cash inflow. That and so what's wrong with that? That said, I mean. The tricky thing about it is it can feel like double dipping to me if you're uh, do, you're running advertisements as, as a revenue stream and you're asking people to do donations because as far as I know, uh, there's no way on YouTube to say these specific users don't have to see ads, but these ones do, you know, mm. um, and even so, and even then there's kind of like a weird thing where it's like, well, if you don't want to give me money, you still have to give me money. It, it's an <laughs> odd it's it's a very odd thing. Um, I think an interesting thing to do would be to say, "I'm going to turn off ads. Please support me on Patreon." In which case, it's, I, I don't know that that revenue model is particularly great. I could be wrong there. I don't have you know data on it. Um, I, I don't think it should be dismissed. I, I think a lot of people tend to dismiss um, revenue streams for Let's Play because it quote unquote feels wrong to them. You know, which I don't think is a real reason. So I, I think it is. I think it's a valid. I think it's a valid cash inflow. It's something you should look into. But I could see it turning off your audience for being a little. Bit yeah, I think some people are afraid to do that because they'll feel like doing that is like admitting that they're selling out. Yeah, but that's. Yeah. <laughs> it's, oh no! You need silly. money to live. It's really silly, but I know there are probably some people out there who worry about that. <laughs> well, here's the here's the thing about sell, quote unquote selling out too is that if you're not doing the cash inflow stuff directly, then you do have to. If you do want to do this really, you do have to sell out quote unquote, and you yeah. have to do the things people don't like, like ha like that you might not like to do, like two hundred half. I think that's videos. huge. Yeah. Uh, right. I'm really optimistic, I guess in general, but also about the idea of Patreon as an LP uh, revenue source. Because I like the idea of needing to get people who really like your stuff and appreciate it, rather than needing the maximum number of eyeballs you can game with like your YouTube tags. Uh, I yeah. think that, that has uh, the, the chance to lead to a better product. And if you do have that reliable stream and you're not just... Uh, relying on whatever will get the most viewers, maybe you are freed up to take a chance on a game that people are less likely to look for uh, and find you. You know? Yeah, yeah, I definitely uh, agree with you, and I feel like I mean, again, I, I I don't do let's play, so I'm not like I'm not sure if this is like a thing that you could do, but like, you, there's also the possibility like you could still like have your YouTube videos up with like you know your revenue streams and stuff, but then you could also um like just for your Patreon like pledgers uh to to be like hey i you know i did like a smaller video like that all you guys can get like first or whatever or like I, i've just been doing some side stuff that you can see here i don't know if that's like a thing that like uh it reminds me of a video i was gonna do for red to pray where this guy um said like if you support me with patreon you know i'll, I'll show you all the videos and he said this i didn't think we're good enough for my channel oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Yeah, Sorry, if you're going to, if you're going to do that model of having ads and also uh, releasing videos to your Patreon followers, you got to make sure that that the content that they're paying for that they're getting extra is worth it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. I mean, and that opens up a whole thing of is what if someone else distributes it for free? What if Indeed, one of your, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. so, then, I mean, if one of your Patreon supporters wants to do that, I guess that's on them because you're giving it to them. But what about all the other people who wanted this exclusive content? You know, I, I, I don't know. It's, it's tricky, and um, I don't think it should be dismissed because it's quote unquote greedy. I think, but I, I, it's, a I think it's tough. It's tough to do without something. And, and like, I, and like, I think I was talking about, and Ironicus agreed with me. Was like, it's better to do stuff like that. Than things like I have to play Terraria or I have to play whatever. I have you know to have I mean? a scare cam all the time. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Push my Patreon so I don't I, have a scare cam. I Sorry. suppose <laughs> I, I should come clean and say uh, I do have, or a group I'm in has a Patreon. Uh, the the uh, Let's Play Thirteenth Age group. We are using mm -hmm. it to. Uh, we're getting a pro website, our own hosting. Uh, as soon as that's paid for, it'll go to better mics. I mean, we're we're doing it right, but I mean, we are doing it cards on the table. So and full no, you know, and yeah, and I, I'll be frank with you, you know, because it does tie into independent games. Because some people also think like indie games shouldn't do 
pr you know profitable things frankly you know what i mean like dlc or or stuff or you know what i mean like business practices that are actually okay i'm not talking about microtransactions or pay to win type of things but i am talking about like you know yeah dlc for example um mm -hmm. it's things like that because when you do, when you do work smaller there is this notion of selling out or whatever but you know business is business and your time is worth money you know that's just mm -hmm. the, that's just the thing so you shouldn't you shouldn't feel ashamed about it i think you personally know what the line is and what line you don't want to cross don't just don't let other people like define that for you because that's, that's yeah. like yeah yeah definitely. that's my only like, thing I think, a lot of times, no. I think a lot of times, like, people can uh, send the message that, like, uh, creators, like, somehow don't, like, deserve, like, to make money off of stuff. Like, especially, you know, things like Let's Play or even, like, indie devs, I know, um, have a lot of trouble, like, if they want to, you know, make money off of, like, small games. A lot of people are like, well, why should I pay for this? Like, it's, uh, it's only, like, I'm only going to play it for one hour. Like, you know, I need to... Like people seem to have this idea that like there should be like an hours to dollars ratio like for oh like if this game isn't price. thirty hours it was a waste yeah like <laughs> I can't literally rot my life away playing this game what's the point like would not buy again um right so it's Xenoblade to, like... Chronicles X is going to be the most expensive game ever oh, God <laughs> <laughs> our um. <laughs> So yeah, so it's it's just important that like uh, creators know that like yes, you are allowed to like make money off of the things that you're making, like and you know it's good and like you know you should you should do that. <laughs> yeah, and, and it, that's the thing because um, even like stuff, you know, even like microtransactions, like I was I was dissing before actually, I think are are kind of. Um, are kind of appropriate even for something like the mobile space like phone games because that's a market where five dollars is considered expensive so if you ever want to make a game for that type of platform you're screwed right because you can't yeah. use like all that r d time and all the development time and recoup those losses unless you do things like that and that's and so that's like where i'm saying like we take like something like microtransactions on triple a games that can sell for 60 dollars that's where it feels like i think it's nickel and diming things mm -hmm. so i don't know in terms of let's play specifically where the line is where you say if i do patreon and ads that's bad it might not be i don't know um it, it that's one of those things that smells funny to me but again i don't know if i'm just seeing things that's not there or whatever um yeah it, it's tough though because again yeah your t your time really is worth money you know so it's like yeah you should of course you should do let's play for fun but you know you should also like do do what what's fun for a living <laughs> so that's that's the tricky thing right yeah i'm just you know yeah for sure i'm as someone who's worked corporate for like over 10 years there there's a point where it's like you know i am just spending a lot of my time making someone else money you know what i mean it is <laughs> nice to, to do it on yourself you know to do something for yourself i should say yeah all right yeah. we got a question from uh vicus uh with the purchase of maker uh that is the uh popular youtube network maker studios do you think the bigger LP conglomerates will start to steer away from indie games? Is it already happening? Thank you, Vicus. Um. Mm. <laughs> no. So yes. No. <laughs> so I don't know. So a lot of the big LPs are based do focus on AAA games a lot, but I feel like they're the line between. Triple A and some indie games is a little blurry now because like there's some that end up, you know, some of the most well-known indie games blow up and they're they're huge and they might as well be regarded as like on the same status as some of those. So I don't know. I don't think the status or the focus would go entirely away from indie. I, I would say that it would probably focus on only like the most prolific ones, maybe. Here, well, I, I think the tricky thing is I don't know. The, well, it is kind of conglomeration, but it's like now that they're there's big money in lp you you have these company uh, sorry that you know mumble was talking to me and then my ear started <laughs> <by>. um <laughs> uh you have like you have, since there's big money in lp you have companies involved that want to produce things and they want to make exclusive deals and things like that so uh you know what you get now is not so much hey we need to secure a triple a game but you get things like exclusivity rights coming into let's play which is a big one 
you know, like there really are like exclusivity rights for PewDiePie, where like there's some games only he can do. Another com another what? Video. Yeah. What? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. I mean, within really? a time limit. Yeah. There's then there's a, I mean there it, 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 there's an embargo that like runs out then and then. Oh my god. Like, but like he gets it early. I'm sure Toby Turner does. You know, um, I, I don't know how big you have to get. You know, I'm sure Markiplier probably has. You know, that kind of uh, level of popularity, that sort of thing. You know, um, and then, so yeah, then you, that's I think what's getting interesting now is that as more of these companies are kind of now fighting each other for exclusive content and things like that, where is that going to go? You know, everyone's going to be interested in like sort of AAA game kind of things, and that means that only certain companies and are only, are only going to be able to do it for you know, periods of time and things like that. I mean, and then that, and it's going to be interesting to see if that happens to independent game developers and what they're going to do about it. I mean, it, you know, yeah. it, it's it's funny, though, you know, speaking of money and all that, if you didn't know, Notch uh, was approached by Google and given the Nintendo deal, which was if you want, you, you will get a cut of every Minecraft video on YouTube. Oh, um, Jesus. It it's was frightening. Like, <laughs> yeah, it was like you, um, you know, because so, the trick is, if a person does it, they have the option to turn on ads on or off. But if, like, a company does it and they just get all the money, of course, all the ads will go on and Google gets the half of it. And Notch actually said no to it. Uh, he was just like, I felt like Let's Play drove sales of my game. This is on Twitter, too. Um, you know, and so, which is, like, nuts because I can't believe how much money he must have turned down. I know. I mean, I again... don't feel like buying Europe this week. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think I think there must be a point too, because he must. Where I, I'm sure you you certain people get rich enough. You yeah. know what I mean? Like <laughs> no. like your Jonas Salt kind of person who's like I I am enough to be comfortable for however many years. My future seems somewhat secure. I don't. This isn't a, a a score to me. And then you have people who are like, you know, not even greedy, but like see sort of like the accumulation of money as like a game, you know, and do want to keep doing that sort of thing. So I don't know. That's what I yeah. that's, uh, my, that's my hope, at least. That's my naive hope. But um, <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry about that. I hope I hope that kind of helps answer uh, Vicus's question, maybe. I, yeah, I, I think I think we're pretty good on, on concluding that as our last question. Um, oh, all right. Yeah, that was good. Uh, yeah, just yeah, just noted. Is, 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 is anyone have a little any, bit like, of overtime? A little bit. Yeah, right. a little bit, but it is fine because because we have we have, we have a music performance a little later. Um, what's it called? Does anyone have any last comments? Any final things they want to note? Give me this is my... fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll probably stick around in the chat to talk to people, answer questions. That, that, that is perfect, actually. Yeah, because because the chat tends to be pretty active after the panels, actually. So if you want to want to stay around, that'd be pretty cool. Uh, one thing I'd like to put out is uh, I personally, I guess I'm springing this on you, Chip, but I'd love to do more uh, indie game content. Yeah. Uh, so even if it's just like quick looks, one shot videos, just because there's so much out there that could be yeah. really interesting to bring to people. So I, like, I've, I've said this before in a podcast we did. Uh, just a few weeks ago, like, yeah, I, I have received emails and codes from indie game developers before, and I've always thought, should I do this or not? Because, you know, when, when I don't want to... If I get a whole bunch, I feel like I should do all of them, give everybody an equal opportunity, you know? But then it's... I don't know. I'm afraid we'll be like a floodgate of too many things. <laughs> I, I don't... I'll just say right now to you, you don't have to do all of them. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> it is I'd okay. say... I'd say do the good games. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I mean, you never know. You oh, never snap. Know. In... Um, one final one thing I want to make, because I know we did talk about money, is I also just, I, I, as one last takeaway on that, I don't want anybody to think, too, that, like, the reason you shouldn't do Let's Play because it's easy, quote-unquote, easy money, you know? And there are people out there who do it and clearly don't like it, where, like, they yeah. feel... Or, Unfortunately, YouTube really does record um, uh, reward quantity over quality, um, and but you can tell some people are really just kind of sick of what they're doing and don't like it just by the way they don't talk about the game or do or, you know what I mean. So obviously you don't want to go there, but just other than that, like if if you're too sh ashamed or afraid or weird about taking the money, someone else is happy to do it. So if you really want to <laughs> do that, then go do that. You know. Okay. Uh, I, I'm All sorry, right. I see okay. Ironicus in the chat saying there will be a police not to wrong parade, but not by slow beef. You are so full of it. No, I'm well, <laughs> not necessarily. 
the there, deal there is done. There will be one, and uh, hint, hint, I, wink, wink. Yeah. So, so are you guys good? I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, oh, go ahead. Support okay. esports. Uh, play Yoshi's Cookie competitively. <laughs> Throw Yoko. <laughs> Okay. So I, for people watching this, uh, who want to stick around, I, I'm not entirely sure. I think I might be around for another panel later tonight. I think I'm actually on that with you. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. Cool. Wait. Uh, okay. yep, is there another panel tonight? I'm the stream host, <laughs> and I was not aware. Uh, <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we'll let's talk. We'll figure it out. <laughs> let's talk for a minute. Uh, as far as I know, we are going to try to stream a panel from the University of Washington, although I'm on the phone oh. with them right now, and it sounds like that they are having some technical issues, which we may not be able to resolve. So in that case, that will be hopefully recorded there to be broadcast at a later date, although currently, at this point, you know as much as I do. Uh, but at it is currently just after 7 o'clock p.m., and then at 8 o'clock, we are planning a special musical presentation, and I am working with the musician right, now, musician right now to get that set up, so I will also post more of that information in the stream here in just a moment. And outside of that, thank you everybody for coming in and having such a great conversation. Uh, we have all really enjoyed having you here at Indy 3. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, thanks I for having had a real good time. Glad to be a part of it. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody. I'm going to go take us to a brief intermission while we work out the next bit of our schedule.